Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Tyrannosaurus. Okay, T Rex. Hi folks, my name is Vincent Flignot. I'm the co-founder of Bruit Studio with my partner Thibaut Chukhoin. And both together we collaborated with Stéphane Dufour from Articulated Sounds in a cool uh, new sound collection called Extinct Animals, the Jurassic. And you guess it, it's all about dinosaurs. So we thought it might be interesting to talk a little bit about how we made the library uh, and even uh, show you a real session. So Thibaut picked one, I picked one, uh, and we're gonna show you how we made the sound, what, what are the sources, and what are the processing and everything. So at the beginning, uh, we took a large amount of time just to do some research think about what we want to achieve, what already exists on the, on the market, uh, what's not existing, what's missing maybe. Uh, and we basically scan the whole internet uh, looking for sound design, uh, for dinosaur tips and tricks, which of course took us to Gary Rystrom, uh, the legendary sound designer who worked on the original Jurassic Parks. And we came across this uh, video from In-Depth Sound Design, which is, by the way, an amazing uh, YouTube channel on uh, sound design deconstruction. And Gary here uh, talked about how he made the sound of the T-Rex. And instantly, we can uh, notice that the sources are quite the not common one. So, it talks about whale, alligator, lion, baby elephant. Baby elephant is a key element here. And we didn't add the, we didn't have the chance to to uh, to have that kind of sources to work with. So we had to find uh, alternatives uh, around us. So we we use uh, a lot of props uh, actually in this uh, library and of course our voices uh, but the Tsenken uh, CO100K here um, helps a lot for that it's not doing everything but it helps a lot it's a really good base to start with okay so before switching to Reaper I would like to show you a bunch of photos we we made during a recording session. Here you can see um, a props ID uh, borrowed to Tim Preble, who himself borrowed it uh, from Christopher Scurion, I think, a fellow um, fair recordist uh, in the famous fair recording Slack. Uh, and it, um, it's a hog call in slime which give a, a kind of a resonance to the sound. Uh, it's, it's a good source for, uh, for creatures, basically uh, any type of creatures. We recorded uh, some birds. We had the chance to uh, be able to record predatory birds um, in, a specific, uh, in a specialist center, which was really, really cool. This is the setup uh, of uh, Thibaut more bird. Uh, Stefan was in uh, Malaysia at that time, so he had the chance to record some elephants. This, this donkey, uh, uh, you, you're gonna see uh, in a moment, is my baby elephant equivalent. Uh, some household uh, props, more birds, and uh, me trying to record uh, 
pterodactyl wings with my uh, blanket basically. So let's switch to Reaper. The sound I choose to show you uh, is the T-Rex scream precisely. Uh, I managed to find three iterations of the sound. Uh, so the first one is not so good. The second one is closer, but something is still missing. And I think the, the third one is pretty close to what we all had in mind when we think about the T-Rex screaming. So I'm going to play it right now. It's going to be a, a bit loud. So. And that's it. So now let's switch to uh, a small session I did just to showcase um, the sources we used in the library, uh, a few examples of sources. Um, first of all, there is a uh, goose call. So I, I talked a, a bit about that. Uh, so fake bird call uh, into, uh, into some slime or weird stuff. And there is a uh, two uh, performance, especially uh, we, we use a lot in the design. Uh, so let's hear it without any effect, without any pitching. So it's minus uh, 18 semiton. <coughs> 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 Let's slow down the sound, 18 semitons. Interesting. Sound like an animal almost already. And uh, with the processing. That's an example of a bird call, fake bird call. Uh, let me close that folder. Uh, there is one sound I use a lot for the T-Rex. It was one on the of the only sound of lion that we we had at uh, our disposal. And uh, one thing that this library uh, show us, teach us, is how to use small amount of sources and build a lot of things based on that. So this is the original call from the lion. Now this is the first pass of processing. Sadly uh, I didn't have the process in this session but here is the result. Okay, and uh, last, uh, a, a slow down version, um, six semitones lower with um, a, a large uh, FX chain, which sounds like this. So th there is a, a color, a fullness in that sound that I really, really like. So yeah, I use it uh, pretty extensively uh, in the making of this library. Okay, next up, uh, there was a recording Stefan did of a donkey, and I was finding something interesting in, in it too. So here is the original sound. So 
this is very noisy so it's not a perfect source but usually mixed down with other elements it's not that a big deal uh, here is the first version so it's a low down um, 14 semitones Okay, with if effects. Sorry, my CPU is uh, uh, crashing a bit with the uh, video screenshot. Um, and uh, now, uh, some version I did uh, using that source, that sound, to to have a longer scream. So I I, I use a technique, a uh, classic technique of uh, duplicating the sound, reversing, reversing it, uh, and reduplicating it again to have a, a longer scream. So here it is. <laughs> you will see uh, I'm gonna use that for the, the T-Rex uh, scream. Uh, now a uh, DJ Redo, uh, Thibaut uh, recorded. It's a little bit dry right now, but there is something interesting for the high pitch uh, scream of the T-Rex. Uh, baby pig, uh, really squealy. <coughs> yeah, you're gonna see when it's pitched down, it's interesting. So. a bit lo-fi too, mono, but we can we can deal with that. And uh, last example of sources, uh, uh, rubber balloon. So I I, I, I was trying everything to have this trumpeting sound for the T-Rex. And um, one thing that sounding not that bad was uh, inflating some rubber balloon while pinching the tail of the balloon. And it's, it had a, a kind of almost distorted uh, elements, metallic elements, something uh, shrieking. So uh, here it is. Of course, it, it's the two octave downs here. something something interesting uh, so let's go into the real session now I'm gonna show you only the the first variation um, and basically it can be decomposed in two elements let's get rid of that track um, layer a layer B layer a is more uh, the jaw elements uh, mouth um, uh, detail elements uh, we can say uh, and also the, the growl, the body, the weight, and the layer B is uh, is uh, the this characteristic tonal high uh, pitched sound uh, of the of the T-Rex. So let's hear the the first layer uh, in solo. Sorry about the, those damn dropouts. Uh, and now let's hear the high pitch layer in solo, which didn't sound that good alone. But mixed together, it sounds like that. Let's uh, let's detail a little bit uh, the things in the first layer. So here is um, the first growly element, which is um, uh, some sources we we designed uh, by combining a lot of recordings uh, processed. So it sounds like this. Okay, if I solo everything.
If you listen well, you can recognize the lion source here. Um, cool. And now let's hear the um, the longer growly scream behind the, the high pitch sound. Uh, so in details, it's um, it's an element of the Brachiosaurus that Thibaut uh, designed. Uh, the start of the attack, very cool. Um, uh, this is the 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 rubber ballon uh, I was demonstrating before. with a, a bunch of effects just to give more uh, width and this EQ oh damn okay there is definitely a, a frequency I didn't like there and um, the last layer element of this uh, low low growly uh, scream uh, it's uh, it's something I, I did in uh, S layer by combining a lot of re uh, recording we did and processing Uh, I see that I use uh, intensity uh, on this one and another EQ. Yeah, I think uh, I wanted to let some space for the other element because it's really full. I play a lot with the limiter on the on this sound. It was borderline, but it uh, it was it was okay. Uh, and finally, the tail of the uh, low element. Cool. So uh, the layer A all together again. Cool. Um, now let's go into the layer B, maybe the most interesting here. Um, uh, let's hear this one louder a bit in solo. So you can uh, see that it's a it's a RPP file. So it's a it's a sub project. So there is more things uh, in here. So let's let's open the the sub project here to see what's going on. Um, here we are. So there is a bunch of muted track. I uh, should have deleted them. Yep, okay. So in here we can hear uh, three sources: didgeridoo, pig here, and donkey here. The didgeridoo uh, sounds like that. Mm. It's hard to believe it sounds uh, good at the end, but this is the the baby pig pitch down and the donkey. All together. So this is interesting, but this is not it for sure. Uh, notice there is also a, a bunch of uh, subtle uh, play rate envelope. So without the envelope, it sounds like that. And with the envelope, it's subtle. It's a small raise in pitch at the end, at the beginning. Um, so this is a this is a sub project, but uh, definitely it's not doing all. So the effects here. Uh, add something for sure. Uh, let's hear it with uh, with the effect now. And the the, the happy accident um, uh, that happened at that moment it's it wasn't high enough, bright enough. So I was trying everything with effects, and uh, usually it's not working like that. Using more effects didn't make it. 
90% uh, of the time. Uh, so I don't know uh, how it happens, but uh, I think I I took uh, the sound, duplicate them, and I uh, um, and accelerated the sound one octave up. Um, and something was happening uh, instantly. So here it is, one octave up. It's not perfect, but it's maybe the tone uh, I was looking for. So, oops. So I printed that. Uh, I printed the effects too, and um, it give uh, it give me this element. <laughs> A bunch of uh, uh, pitch work, and, um, and now if I add the, the reverb, which is uh, another interesting element because usually I kind of hate reverb uh, for sound effect, at least uh, for music, uh, it's another story. But for sound effect, I usually use delay, uh, I find that reverb take too much space, and I like dry sound. Uh, but I was trying to give the size of the the T-Rex, and um, one idea I had was that in its own body that was some kind of reflection, maybe, or it's so much loud that it's uh, there is a little bit of reverb. So I I use one I use a M tubo reverb with a, a living room preset, which is something I find funny. To imagine the the T-Rex in my living room, screaming, but it's it's working pretty well. Uh, I don't use it uh, that loud uh, during the scream, but I raise the wet at the end of the sound, and uh, it's helping a lot to make it believable. Forget the fake tail at the end. So here it is with uh, the reverb. <laughs> And now both together, I raise down, uh, I lower down the volume back. Here we are. And uh, now uh, again, all together. Here we are. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. I didn't go uh, effects by effects uh, because it would have take too much time. But if you have any question, you can drop me an email at this address, bruit.studio.vincent at gmail.com and uh, I will be happy to answer you. Thank you for listening. See you next time.